resources or your source. Mm -hmm. Your resources or your source. We the people of the Most High, sometimes what happens is we lose sight of the difference between our resource and our source. Amen? Your source is what Yahweh provides for you in the way of a job, a home, income, a support system, uh, any type of thing that you have need of to live and survive and support and take care of your family is a resource. Amen? Amen. Amen. So if you have a job today, that job is not your source. It's your resource. Yes. Amen? And so we have to be careful that we don't mix the two up, depending too much on the resource and not the source. Amen. Because he is our source and not our resource. Amen. It's endless, endless, endless. He is endless. The source never, ever runs out. But your resources may end tomorrow. They may come and tell you that your job just laid off and you no longer have a position. What are you going to do when your resource runs out? Amen? And I like the way I.B. Hillier put it. I was sharing this with Mr. Diane. He said it's like this. He said you can take a picture of water from the river, and the water in the pictures, it looks just like the water in the river. It has the same effect on us as, when you drink it as the water in the picture as the water in the river. Amen? He said you can drink the water out of the pitcher or you can go to the river and drink the water. He says, but the difference is the water in the pitcher is going to run out. <laughs> but that water in the river is an endless resource yes, of water. Yes, yes. Right now. Amen? It's a source. The water in the river is the source. And the water in the pitcher is just a little resource. And yeah. so we have to stop and look at what it is that he's telling us in this day and this hour because the economy's gone bad. Everything around us, people, people are losing jobs, right? Yes. We cannot totally depend on those resources. Amen. So Amen. when your rubber meets the road, what's going to happen to you? And how are you going to respond when your resources run out? Are you going to connect to the source? See, that's your power source is him. And he has everything that we need. Amen. And so... He's trying to share something with us today that all around us, we're going to see things. He spoke to me about a spiritual storm coming. Amen? And all around us, things are getting ready to take place. But we have to be, have to be steadfast and strong and steady in the source, plugged into the power source. Because if we're plugged into the power source, whatever happens in the world around us is not going to affect us. Because we're going to recognize that there's an endless source of power available to us. Amen. Amen? Mm -hmm. And then we're not going to lose sight of what he's saying. Just because, you, the, because they lay you off. And this is how you know when, that you are trusting in your resource as opposed to your source is when they come to you and say, tomorrow's your last day. Come on, man. What happens to you? Do, you? do you faint? Do you lose your confidence? Do your attitude change because you mm -hmm. begin to think of one thing. How am I going to pay my bills? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You Come don't on, stop. Man. That's the first Come thing on, you man. think about is not your source being plugged into the power source of the most high. That's endless. never runs out. But what the first thing we think about is if somebody gives us a report that our job is gone, you're not going to have that job tomorrow. The first thing is we begin to be concerned about is those resources, not our source. These last days that we're in right now, no matter what comes up on us, our families, the earth, ramp, whatever happens, we have to stay plugged into the power source. Amen. Trusting and knowing that no matter what happens or what it looks like, he is our source and he is our provider and he is going to take care of his people. you got to know that beyond a shadow of a doubt. Amen. Amen. So how do you know when you're trusting in resources 
and not your source. When you're trusting in resources is when your attitude changes when your money is low in the bank. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden your attitude changes. That's when you know you were dependent on what you had in the bank opposed to what your source. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. You're trusting in your resources when you can't pay your bill and the electric company says they're going to turn off your electricity and you begin to stress about it, not unknowing where you're going to get the money to pay your electric bill. Guess what? You're trusting in a resource and not the source. Amen. Amen. So we can't be moved by every wind and doctrine being tossed and to and fro. We have to be steadfast people of God, trusting, knowing for a fact that he is a provider. And he said in his word that he will take care of his people. Amen. 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 If you trust him. Amen. 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 You trust him in resources when you get a bad report. And you choose to believe the report of man rather than the report of your source. Mm -hmm. when, looks, when it looks like all odds are stacked against you, amen, and there's no way out, you cannot see the light at the end of the tunnel. You're trusting in resources and not the source. Amen? Mm -hmm. When you lose your peace over any situation, you're looking at a resource and not a source, because he said, what did he say? You all know, my peace. He gives you, the peace is your inheritance. Amen. So if the enemy comes and causes you to lose your peace, it's because your mind and your heart is not plugged into your, to your source, but your resource. We stress over money problems and health problems and all of these things when he said, he supplies all of our needs according to his riches and glory, right? Amen. And he said, I am the most high that he lived be. Amen. He's got many, many promises in the word. We don't believe him. No, we believe him. We don't trust him. Yes, there Amen. You go. There you go. There you go. <laughs> we believe it. We believe he's the Savior, right? Mm -hmm. We believe he died on the cross, right? Mm -hmm. Rose again. Yeah. We believe that. Amen. Mm -hmm. But we do not trust him with our life. We don't believe that he can supply all our need. We say we do. It's Come easier on, said than done. We say, my God supplies all of my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ. But you don't really believe that he supplies all of your needs because as soon as you have a need, you look at your resources uh -huh. and not your source. Uh -huh. Amen? Amen? So you can believe him and not trust him. There was a saying that um, this guy had a bunch of money. He took his money to the bank. And the, guy, and the banker said, we'll take care of you. We'll take care of your money. All you have to do is, you know, put your money in our bank here, and it, it'll, be, it'll be taken care of. And the man leaves, and he takes his money with him. And, and his friend says, well, you didn't leave your money? You didn't believe that they would take care of your money? He said, yeah. I believe they take care, but I didn't trust. Mm -hmm. And that's how we are. We believe, <laughs> but we don't trust him. Yeah, yeah, Amen? Yeah. Because if we trusted him, Every time we hear something negative, bad report, we you know anything contrary to the way we think it ought to be, we wouldn't fa our character wouldn't faint, we wouldn't begin to stress, we wouldn't begin to get agitated, irritated, and all of those things because we don't have what we think we should have. Mm -hmm. Our resources just ran out. But when you plug into the power source. Your resource never runs out. That's right. They said there's we they said we're in a failing economy and, 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 and there's no money. But he said in his word, everything, all the gold and the silver is mine. That's what he said. Amen. That's right. Everything in this whole earth is his and the fullness thereof. So he has an endless resource for you and I if we not only believe, but we trust. How do we get there? Amen. We have to go back over our lives and all the things that he has ever done for us and remember from whence we came and all of the blessings that he has done for us and we can count him faithful. See, if you can't count him faithful, you can't trust him. Amen. 
You don't trust somebody that's not faithful. You have to be able to count your source as a faithful source. Mm -hmm. We already know the resource ain't faithful. Right. We already knew, know that at some point in time, those resources run out. The money runs out in the bank. The job may shut down. Anything can happen to the resources. But what we do know is the source never runs out. Mm -hmm. We know that for a fact because he's the creator. Amen? Mm -hmm. So until we get plugged in and not only believe that he's the creator, but trusting the fact that he said he'll do, he'll do what he said he would do. Amen. So what did he say? You got to go back to the promises. What did he say he would do for you and you uh, are waiting for him to do? Wow. You got to look at yourself and say, now do I believe and not trust? And then when you go back over the scriptures, you have to see every scripture where he did what he said he was going to do. He promised Abraham a seed. It took him almost 99 years. That's right. But he was yeah, faithful. That's right. Sarah was past having children. Isn't that right? Yeah. But what did she say in Hebrews 11? I counted him faithful who had promised me. Mm -hmm. Amen. And when we, as the people of God, begin to count him faithful to his promises and trust in the very source that said it, there is going to be nothing withheld from us. We got to do this. When we look at him like he, we, I've been praying and I've been praying and I've been waiting and waiting and I still haven't got it. Mm -hmm. Do I trust you? Mm -hmm. I See, the trust is, is, is built. You build trust. You don't mm -hmm. meet somebody today and trust them tomorrow. Mm -hmm. A trustworthy friend is over time. Then you have watched their life and studied them and, and seen what they were going to do and saw that their word was true and they, were, they wasn't a liar, but whatever they said, they kept their word. Mm -hmm. And then you, you build that trust and that faithfulness with that friend or that companion. It's the same way with God and the word. Amen. Amen. You Amen. got to build that up in you. That's why he gives you the word. Amen. And he shows you all of the promises and everything that he has done. And then he turned around. And say in his report card, he gets all A's because everything he's said to us, he's done it. Mm -hmm. You go back over your life and see all of the things from the time you got saved to the, to the day of everything he's done for you and say, Father, I count you faithful you, and trustworthy to do what you said you was going to do. Now, I'm in this situation today, and I forgot where I came from. <laughs> I was talking about thought about that on the way. I forgot from which I came, and I forgot about all the things that you have done in my life where I helped you trustworthy. Now, this situation that I'm going through today, <laughs> you are more than able, yes. more yes. than able yes. to take care of this, what yes. I'm asking you for today. Yes. Build yourself up in trusting in what he has said he would do for you. See, we got to get there, saints. We can't quit talking and not building ourselves up and getting this word in us so that we can produce what we say out of our mouth. Amen. 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 He is an awesome, 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 awesome. Amen. And you know what else he is? He is our exceedingly great reward. Amen. That's what he said. He said, I am your exceedingly great reward. Now, I don't know about you, but exceedingly means over and abundantly. Yes. yes. So if we're suffering lack, if we're suffering in our bodies or wherever we're suffering at with our children, whatever it is, he is our exceedingly great reward. That means I want to do exceedingly abundantly something for you if you can trust me. <laughs> Not if you believe me, <laughs> but if you can trust me. Amen. Amen. See, I trust him because I count him faithful in everything he's done in my life. And more than one occasion, I have gone back over my life and the life of my seed and the prayers that I have prayed. And I go back over those things, and sometimes they laugh at me because they say, you always say that when you get up there. You're always telling the testimony. I tell the testimony because when I refresh it in my mind, and when I speak it out into the atmosphere, yes. it just makes me trust him more. Yes. You yes. see? Yes. So I always go back 
all over my life and my children's life. And I recall how he healed my son when he couldn't hear, was born without hearing. And I say it all the time. Amen? Because it was a miracle. How many of you know we need miracles today? Okay. So I can count him trustworthy for the miracle that I'm standing for Hallelujah. today because he proved himself trustworthy to me when my son needed a miracle and couldn't hear. Okay. He proved himself trustworthy to me when my son's legs was mangled and he couldn't walk. And he was walking on the back of the leg or in front of it or whatever. One leg was shorter than the other leg. But he proved himself faithful to me when he gave him that miracle. Amen. Amen. So I can pull on the things that he's already done for me and say, Father, I believe and not only believe, I trust you because you've proven yourself faithful to me. Amen. Amen. He turned situations around for friends and family members when I prayed for him. Yeah. Recently, when I went to the hospital for that man, I didn't even know the man, but I got a call and said he's in the hospital. They're giving him a few hours to live. Y'all know I told you the story. This was just a few months ago. I go out to Harris Methodist Hospital, and he's all in intensive care, all tied up with tubes and everything. I don't know the man, but a friend of mine said that she knew him, and he was dying, and could I go? I counted him trustworthy. I didn't know if the man was saved or not. I didn't know if the man was even worthy of getting a second chance. Amen? Amen? But I went yeah. and I asked God. I said, give him a second chance. Mm -hmm. Give him some more years mm -hmm. with his family. Yes. And because of the prayers of the righteous, they are very much That's saints. Right. Amen. And because of those prayers, what did he do? He turned that man's life around that day. Yes. Before yes. I could get home, they was talking about moving him out of intensive care into a regular room and the man is still living today. Mm -hmm. I count him trustworthy. Amen. 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 You can pull on every prayer Hallelujah. that you've ever prayed and God Hallelujah. answered you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Every prayer. And you know, we've been praying a long time for people. Yes, we have. And we've seen many, many miracles. And we can call upon those miracles yes. for ourselves and count him trustworthy to do the same for us. He's no respecter of person. Amen. Amen. I count him trustworthy when my, the enemy tried to take my oldest daughter out of here before her time. Pain going around her head and down her side and blinding her when she was just a young girl. And I got it in my spirit that something was wrong. And I went and saw and talked to her and she said, Mom, I don't understand. She said, I can't hardly see. So I got a pain going around my head and down my side and I stopped right there. I said, you devil, you are liar. She, you will not take her out of here before her time. Amen. 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 And y'all know she's still running around out there someplace. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But I counted him trustworthy Amen. because he responds to our words. That's right. He answers our prayers. Amen. 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 My grandson, before he was even born, in the womb, had a heart condition. How did I know that? The Lord spoke to me and told me to get her up out of the bed at 2 o'clock in the morning and bring her in the front room and lay hands on her and the baby would leap in her womb. Until that time, the baby had not even been moving and she was almost nine months pregnant. She, we go to the church service and you got a prophet there that's beginning to pray for her and the baby's breach. Before she lay her hands up on her stomach, she said, she had to take her hands off. All right, all right. She go get ready to lay her hands on it. She did just like this. She said, "Who's been praying for this baby?" Mm -hmm. See, right. we gotta right. count him trustworthy right. and go back and pull up on the prayers that we've already prayed and he's already asked for. He is our source and exceedingly great reward. Thank you, Father. That day, the baby turned right in front of us in her womb. She said, this baby had a heart condition in the womb. And she looked at me and she said, how did you know? God answers our prayers. If you're faithful, if you keep your hands clean, your heart pure, there's nothing that he will not do for you. Amen. 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 My goodness. I was preaching in a church in Arizona. And somebody came up and handed me a note and said, your sister is in the hospital with pneumonia. 
spot, right in the middle of my sermon. I stopped right there and began to speak to that condition. And the same time that I was speaking to that condition, the pneumonia lifted up off of her in the hospital. See, he's faithful, saints. Amen. Amen. I can give you testimony after testimony on my life alone. Not only my seed and my children. Amen. 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 My son will tell you, he was getting ready to face some serious time. Yeah, they were sending him to the penitentiary, to the worst prison system in Arizona called Florence. The judge told me, he said, I want to send him here there right now. He said, because of your work. Come on now. Come on now. That's what the judge told me. He'll vouch for it. He said, because of your word, mother, I'm going to let him give him another chance. You see, our words carry weight and are powerful. Amen. They're powerful words, and he backs us up when we live right. And so what happened today is we're losing sight of our source, and we're looking at our resources, and so now we haven't got the things that we've been waiting on. Not just you, me, all of us, because we lose sight as we go on time, over time. All of us, we lose sight of the blessings and of the working of his mighty power because we had to wait so long. Come on now. See, Abraham, Isaac wouldn't have been there if they would have gave up when he turned 98. He had to wait one more year. I'm yet standing, believing and trusting in him for my miracle. I'm like they said in the word, in all of my appointed days, mm. I'm going to wait till my change comes. Mm. Because we're plugged in mm. to the source. And we're getting our eyes off of our resources. Mm. God told me, he said, don't look at the numbers. Don't look at, don't count the people. He said, keep your eyes on the source. Mm. My goodness. Amen. He's awesome. He is awesome. Stress is what's taken out the saints today. Because that's something that the world does. And we have implemented that in our daily lives. When stress was never meant for the saints. Not if he said, I give you peace. You see, if you're stressing, you're saying, I don't believe. So if the water bill comes and they get ready to turn it off and you begin to stress and you don't believe. It's just, and you're not trusting God as your source. It might get cut off. But then what you're going to do is your attitude going to change. You're going to get mad at God and say, well, I'm just not going to go to church no more. I'm not going to do nothing because my water bill got cut off. Well, it's a lot of things we can look at. How are we managing the resources that he provided? Because yeah. any of us can look over our life and see, if you go to your bank statement, I promise you, most of us will see Wendy's, Chicken Express, the pizza place. I know, I just was at the pizza place. <laughs> and chicken, church's chicken, KFC. Look at your bank statement. It's going to tell the story of what we're doing with the resources. Not you, just you. But when I speak, I speak to myself as well. It's always first to me and then everybody else. Amen? Whatever we're preaching and teaching. Amen? Amen. You wanna have, we're going to have to trust in him not only for us, but for our family. That's right. Because me and Minister Diane know, our family pull, pull, pull. Everything you got, they will take you for the last 10 cents in your purse and still going about their business. That's right. And when we be trying to give them the word of God, they going somewhere else doing Come something on. different. Come on. When they get in the body, they not calling on their source, they looking at us as the resource. That's right. And we talked about it. Yeah. We're not their resource. That's right. And we're going to have to cut them off That's right. as providing for them as a resource. That's right. Let God be their source as well as he's our source. we got to depend on him for everything we can. Yeah. Right. We're going to have to trust him for our family members as well. Amen. We're going to trust him to, that he is a God that answers prayer and keeps his word. Amen. 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 And so this is what this is this is the message today. I told you it was going to be very short and very sweet today. Amen. But it was going to be full and power packed full of information that's Amen. going to help us to get to this next level 
where we're trying to go. I didn't even give you the scriptures or anything, but I'm just saying, saints, there's a spiritual storm coming. Right. And if that storm knocks on your door, what you go to? How you gonna stand? That's all of us. That's right. The spiritual storm is coming to the people of God. Oh. Yeah. And he's gonna do a separation. Them living on the fence. Come on. Doing every doing whatever they want to do. On. Trying to holler Yah Yah and God and Jehovah or not Jehovah or Yahweh, Elohim, whatever they holler, mm -hmm. but they live in one way. Mm -hmm. And he told me this. He said, Woe unto the leaders and preachers of people that preach one thing but live another. Mm -hmm. See, this is coming to the wire right yes. now. Yes. This is judgment is here. Yes. And it's getting ready to be so widespread. Everywhere you go, you're going to hear of calamity. That's right. What you going to do? You're going to call on that power source is what you're going to have to do. The source that is endless and never runs out. In the midst of the battle, he's on our side. Is he on our side, saints? Amen. Amen. He's Amen. on our side. Amen. Yes. And so yes, with that, is. forget trusting in your resources. And trust in the source. Plug into the power source, and everything is going to be all right. Amen? Amen. 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 We'll praise Amen. the name of the Lord. Amen. We'll call minister.